Hey y'all, I'm in the Christmas spirit. It's that time of the year. You know, as soon as November hits, it's Christmas season. Who gives a fuck about Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. What are we gonna watch? What are we gonna watch? Thanksgiving movies? Eat Thanksgiving f- food? What? Uh, oh, <laughs> kind of, I guess. But my point being, um, I love Christmas. I love the holiday season. I love the whole vibe of it. That's like I'm here for it always. Um. It's such a a nice feeling. Nice time of the it's the most wonderful time of the year I'd be so bold as to say. Now, Pentatonics fans, this is wild. I'm gonna talk about the Meet Me Next Christmas movie on Netflix, starring and prominently featuring Pentatonics. Uh this is wild. In case you don't know, I review movies and uh I'm very into movies as well. And I'm also a big Pentatonix fan, so this is uh, pulling me from two different sides here. So I got two different sides of my brain, uh, kind of at odds, but kind of not. Because I guess if I look at it really critically, the movie's not like the most groundbreaking thing ever. But genuinely, I I really enjoyed it. Actually, I thought it was really cute, and that's about exactly what you want to accomplish for a holiday movie rom com feel good cozy movie like perfect it hits those vibes it checks off all the boxes there to where i could see it being a go-to movie for me especially as a pentatonix fan because it's just cozy and that feeling because they're there and their music's in it and so i'm right i feel right at home with it now i will say my biggest thing i go to for like people's thoughts on movies is letterboxd um I don't go too crazy with it, but I'll look at some of the top reviews, scroll through a bit, see what people are thinking. And um, the biggest takeaway I found very interesting, which I kind of get, but it's like, come on, give, give us some grace here, is people were pretty negative that didn't know who Pentatonix were. In terms of they were, they seemed to be annoyed by them and kind of turned off by their, their personalities. And I totally get that that's our benefit and privilege of being pentatonix fans as we know when scott's talking about being such a big pop star and oh my god like being such a diva about everything that's not like just how scott is that's obviously like just from seeing scott on screen in so many different ways and interacting with the group and everything you can just tell that's like his jokey voice. You know, it's like when he's joking, pretending to be like, oh, I'm a big pop star, even though they're very humble in person. And from all accounts, they seem to be very humble. Um, I don't know him personally, personally, but, you know, we've been around them and in the same spheres as them and have had enough accounts of uh, interactions with them for the past decade that I think it's safe to say... They're fairly humble in person. And yeah, just from that experience, you can just tell that Scott's joking. And a lot of them are joking in the way they interact. Some of his cheesy stuff, like Mitch doing puns the whole movie. And it's like, nice one. But I have a feeling that what turns people off the most is that like, oh, we're pop stars. And, you know, to me, it feels obvious that it was a joke, but... I guess if you have no idea who Pentatonix are, you're just watching this Christmas movie and it's like, what the heck is going on here? Then, uh, yeah, I saw a review. There was like the top rated review, uh, like had the most likes from Letterboxd. And it was like, uh, basically saying they just seemed not pleasant and they were, <laughs> they were annoyed by them from, uh, without knowing them. They were like, I don't know who Pentatonix are, but they don't seem, they don't seem great. <laughs> so, Knowing them, knowing their music, I think it just strikes a completely different chord because you can tell it's obviously jokey. And yeah, you can still be annoyed by the jokiness of it. That's fair enough. But to me, it was just fun. And I mean, that's my bias, I guess. I think I was just happy to see them whenever they were on screen because whenever I heard that they were doing a movie like this, it was wild to me when I heard that the plot was centered around Pentatonix. That blew my mind. Because I'm so used to every other like movie thing, appearance they do. It's always like a tiny little cameo, if anything. 
and this one is like they're the center not only are they the center of the plot like the plot is i need to find these pentatonics tickets to find the love of my life <laughs> and uh not only that but they're prominently starring in the movie as well and i thought those were super fun every time they cut back to pentatonics i was i was fun i was uh happy to see them and see see what little gag they're gonna do next I thought they all had their little moments. You know, obviously Scott was the most prominent. He just always is by default, it seems. But uh, he shined. I thought he was great. Uh, as much as people probably were turned off by thinking that's just how he is. Like, he's just a snob or whatever. <laughs> I thought he was great. And I thought they all had their little moments to shine. And they, they had a lot of personality with that. I also thought Christina Milian as the lead was a great choice. I thought she killed it. I thought she really fit the vibe well and was really endearing. And as someone I, I've known the name for the longest time, but I don't know if I've actually seen any movies that I can think of with her with her in them. I, I couldn't even remember one. So it was really nice to see her, and she was great. The guy who played Teddy as well was also fun. But I just think she shined. She was really a good, a great lead for it. I have to say also that Jordy, that, that fun little character, was a lot of fun. Showed a lot of personality. Really popped on the screen as well. That's uh, Keelan Allen is who plays Jordy, and uh, I didn't know who that was, but uh, apparently he's like a social media star. Uh, it was on YouTube, things like that. I know he's been in show business and things like that as well. But yeah, I just didn't know who he was. But he like brought us into this like drag <laughs> competition. It was wild. That was a wild tangent. This movie went on. Never would have saw that coming. But that was a whole fun side plot, even though it was such a nonsense. The most unbelievable thing to me is that first of all, this woman. I mean, she must be making good money, like really good money, because she got scammed out of $600 and didn't even bat an eye at it. Like once he got away, it was just like she was not bothered by it at all whatsoever. So whereas most people, you lose out of $600 like that, like that's huge. Like it was like <laughs> panicking. She was like, eh, whatever, let's go on to the next thing. Like she was going all out. And by the way, I, like, I don't know, it felt like forever that they were doing this journey. I guess it was all in one day. But then they had then they had that whole practicing for the competition sequence too. So I don't know how long this was, but she just seemed to have all the time in the world to just focus on finding these tickets. Um, my point was to, was to say she was fine with losing six hundred dollars like that. It was not a big deal to her. She was fine to invest all this time and energy into it. So with that, I have to assume she has money. And with that, I'm like, <laughs> the whole plot of the movie is that. She needs to meet up with her love of the life, love of her supposed love of her life, who she promised a year ago. If she was single, she would meet up at Pentatonix to see him. Uh, so she forgot this year, like every other year, she goes to see Pentatonix in concert. This is the year she didn't, and so oh man, I can't. Tickets are all sold out. Um, by the way, this is really. I I thought it was funny as much as I love Pentatonix. I thought there was a funny letterbox review where it's like. Uh, Pentatonix propaganda is my favorite new genre of film because it really felt like wow it's like they really put them up on a pedestal like I've, I've never had that much trouble finding tickets like like yeah you'll miss out on the good ones early on but usually they're they're around for some time like you can find some of the, the further tickets uh or the the more pricey tickets and it, the price doesn't matter to her Okay, I'm t I'm going on a lot of tangents myself. All this to say, the whole plot centers on finding these tickets. She's got the money for it. Just go there on the day of, and you're inevitably going to find there's a scalper there. There's always these scalpers around, like when you're lined up to go to the concert with these tickets. I guess the last couple times I went, there haven't been as many, but it used to be a sure thing. And I'm sure this was in New York, right? So it feels like a shoe-in. But uh, even if not, even if there was no scalp or anything like that, it's also funny because ultimately uh, they could have just met out front. Like I assume if you're going to meet them at the concert, 
then the whole point is like you're not going to go into this huge venue and just hope to find them. You're going to meet at the front. So he'll be waiting at the front. And uh, you don't even need a ticket, really, just to see him and whatever for the whole moment. By the way, I really appreciated that bit with James. The guy, she uh, thought she was standing up to go profess her love to Teddy after the relationship built up through the whole movie. It was a really funny bit where it was like she just laid it all out there because she saw him there standing with flowers. She's talking about, I found this guy. I fell in love with him. Yada, yada, yada. Sorry. Gotta go see him. Doesn't even give him a chance to speak. I was thinking as she was saying that, I was like, oh, wow, he's going to say the same thing. I was like, actually, I was going to say the same thing, but he didn't get his chance to speak. It was almost funnier because then as soon as she left, the other actual girl he was holding the flowers for comes up. It was like, okay, I really appreciated that because it was such an outlandish plot point to begin with to where he was like, they met up in this airport and he's like in the off chance that you, like she was in a relationship at the time. He was like in the off chance that you are single next year at Christmas, let's meet up at this Christmas concert and you know, love happily ever after and all that. And it was like that. First of all, just for him to be standing there, the idea that he was just standing there on the off chance that she was single and happened to do the thing that he said a year ago is wild <laughs> even more wild it's like he he didn't find anyone it all just lined up perfectly but so i'm glad they addressed it and it was like no actually it was that wasn't gonna happen he was just there for this other girl i guess who also happened to love pentatonics because everybody loves pentatonics they should it's not the case but they should i was also really wondering like man this is a weird s- setup to where it's like she was in a relationship runs into this guy uh but the whole idea is a year from now, come to this Pentatonix concert and see me if you were single. So I'm like, how are we going to just get her out of this relationship without it being like weird that she, as if like she wanted to get out, but they immediately were just like breezed right over it. It was like you cut to, uh, after that. And it's the guy running out. He was cheating on her right there in the house. That's another, I guess unrealistic part of the movie is she was just like, totally she was fine with it didn't have any problems like she was upset but it didn't like affect her in any way it was as if she was just like the next day it was like whatever this boyfriend who i've been in with for however long <laughs> probably years he just cheated on me and it's whatever um right before christmas you know <laughs> it's like okay um but sits up now we gotta find this guy the man of my dreams you know and it makes for a wacky little adventure, but, you know, it's fun. It's a wholesome holiday, good feeling movie. It's cheesy, very cheesy at times, but I love it for that. You know, Christmas movies get a pass in that in that aspect for the cheesiness. Last thing I'll say is this whole impromptu, it's called impromptu, this service. It's still very confusing and mind-boggling to me. This guy, Teddy, he works for impromptu, and you just kind of go there, and they, like, help you get stuff. Like, he apparently had all these connections to get tickets, so she went there. It was, like, a very professional setting. She sat at a desk in his office, and he, like, hit a button on the keyboard, and it was, like, nothing found. (laughs) And then suddenly he devotes his whole next couple days to (laughs) setting out and finding these tickets for her. And he that's just what he does as the job. He'll just, like, you get a client, and you just get whatever they need. Like, that seems pretty fun. That That's, like, what I dream of. Like, my dream job is, like, basically doing side quests for people. Like, you're in a uh, video game, in an RPG. That's how... It, that's the kind of vibe I got from it. It's like, is there a service like that? That you just go and they ho- try to hook you up with stuff? I don't know. Let me know if it's something I don't know about, but it just seemed larger than life there. Which, again, that's fine. But it was pretty sweet. You know, it was a sweet movie because you saw that relationship develop... And I don't know why I didn't see it sooner. It was like halfway through the movie. I'm like, oh wait, they're, are they gonna make? They're gonna make them be a thing. But then they really lay it on thick. You know, he's like longingly looking at her, talking about how she's pretty. 
you know, she's sweet and selfless. And then Pentatonix, like, he's got interaction with Pentatonix going on in the DMs where, like, <laughs> they're saying that he's just been talking about how sweet and selfless she is and everything. And I thought that was a whole funny side plot as well. Like, they're rooting interest in it because, like, now I don't know if we want to give him, give her the tickets because should, she should be with Teddy and not go for James. It was a whole thing. <laughs> so it was fun. Pentatonix fans, uh, anybody else who saw the movie who's not a Pentatonix fan, let me know. But particularly Pentatonix fans, I'm, I'm interested in how you felt about the movie. What do you think? Uh, I thought it was great. I mean, way exceeded my expectations. You know, um, I totally get how people get, could get the wrong idea if they don't know Pentatonix. Uh, I wish people would be a little more open-minded because they were a little toxic in these letterbox reviews I saw in terms of like... They're like, I would pay I would pay anything not to see Benetton in concert. That was one of the higher liked reviews as well. I'm like I took direct offense to that because that's like the my main concert experience for like the past several years has been like Pentatonix. Um I'm probably gonna miss this year unfortunately. And I missed I missed another one recently as well. It was I had become a point where I wanted to see them at, at least once in every tour, once every year. I was doing that consistently for years. I just missed the past couple, just money wise. I wasn't able to make it work. But yeah, I took direct defense to that because, like, come on, if you give them a chance, I know you don't know Pentatonix are, the, and the impression here is very cheesy and annoying at times. But you give them a chance, you'll grow to see they're like really humble people, really nice from most accounts that I've heard, uh, as well as some amazing music you gotta give it up for the music and in person and concert experience they're excellent every time so it's like come on it's kind of disheartening to see that in the reviews but i know pentatonix fans are taking it really well and enjoying it uh needless to say the music was great you know there was a couple great pentatonix christmas songs some that i didn't even expect them to use uh like please santa please that was uh, unexpected but like you know, we had some great kirsten vocal vocal moments in here just some great choices and songs as well as meet me next christmas which is their new christmas song which i really like i'd say at some parts of the song is not as full as you come to expect from pentatonix music and christmas music in particular like not as much energy to it but where it really shines and complemented so well is by the uh Mitch's just la, 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 la. and Scott the whole vibe to it like is really driven by that it's uh really nice and that's that's crucial for that song to really give it life and uh yeah so I really like the song actually you know they just don't miss with the Christmas music they just don't it's crazy how much they have like put themselves into like the Christmas music zeitgeist to the extent that they're just like in these playlists you know they even made a reference to oh it's just a christmas or it could just be a christmas music uh, playlist not a coincidence you know because every time i hear christmas music playlist they're now they're in the mix now and um i'm happy to hear them every year and obviously i go out of my, out of my way to listen to them and there's so much such a huge catalog of christmas music from just them now that it's great Anyway, all I had to say, I thought the movie was really cute, really sweet. Christina Milian was great. Pentatonix was great to see him. Loved the vibe of the movie. And yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Um, definitely for like a family movie. Good vibes. Pentatonix fans. Absolutely. Let me know your thoughts below. And all right, take care.